All right, guys. Well, let's see if the second time is a charm. Uh, <laughs> fucking battery. I think I've isolated my problem. Uh, it's the battery, so... Anyway, we're gonna try this again. It is a gloomy, yuck, nasty, gray, drizzly, depressing, slit your wrist kind of day here. On uh, it is now Wednesday. It is January 26, 2022. On this gloomy, depressing day here at the end of the road in the Point Lonesome Swamp here in the end times and uh so since you have been gone uh since i have been gone i know that you guys are uh are desperately waiting for an update uh on my never-ending search for a doomer chick for my doomer chick forever so uh i can't remember I might have already mentioned this one, that I actually did have not one but two dates with uh, a semi-doomer chick that I found on Pile of Fish down here in the Oasis of Freedom. Uh, and so on our second date, at the end of our second date, she basically just said, said Hamlet, I need to give you a fucking reality check that there is no woman on this planet who is going to uh, get, you know, get involved with you with this lifestyle you're leading. Uh, you know, to, to look at yourself. You're, you're, you're living at the end of a fucking dirt road in, in some little piece of shit, uh, you know, some 16-foot camper, uh, you know, plugged into somebody's house and uh, blah, blah, and, and then you run off uh, across the U.S. and you run off to some little shack by the side of the road up there in New York and then no telling where you're going to go from there. As she said, you know, as long as you're going to have choose this lifestyle, you're not going to have a woman in your life. And that's the, that's the reality of the situation. And she was right. That is the reality of the situation. So anyway... Uh, well, now I've sold my fucking place in Florida. I no longer own a place in Florida. I have no clue if I'm ever coming back to this shithole, depending on whether I can find another piece of land. So I am already, since hell, half the winter's gone now anyway, I am already back on pile of fish up there in, uh, in New York looking for my doomer chick forever. So I, I go up there... Last night, uh, after doing my rant last night, uh, starting to look, maybe I need to start looking for a normie. Uh, so anyway, when I was, I'm scrolling through all the ads, and I actually bumped into an ad from uh, this woman that I met. I can't even remember if it was last summer or the summer before last. And this woman is still out there on um, pile of fish. The only difference being this year, uh, her ad, you know, her profile photo, it's, uh, she's playing a mandolin is what she's doing um, in, in, in her main photo. Now this year I notice she has this cute little, uh, this cute little cartoon hypodermic needle emblazoned across her chest, which, which is more and more common, especially up there in the mask Nazi capital of the world, uh, Ithaca, New York, that says, I got the shot. Just, just serving notice that she is, she has gotten the jab, basically serving notice that if you have not gotten the jab, don't even bother so I just could not resist. So all I said to her, since we never got together uh, last year, or I think it was the year before, my uh, response to her before midnight, right before midnight last night, was I am still waiting 
I am still waiting. And uh, so she, uh, this was her response waiting for me in my pile of fish inbox this morning. Down in Florida? Double question mark? I wish I could be a snowbird, but alas, that cannot happen anytime soon. COVID hotspot down there. Did you succumb? I did. I guess she succumbed. I guess I'm getting a message from the grave. Did you succumb? I did up here. A co-worker brought it in and spread it through the office. Roll of the dice. So this was my message back to uh, Lulu. Quote, if I succumbed, it came and went without me noticing. Glad you survived. I notice that Florida is 37th in the nation as far as new, you know, COVID numbers with 36 states, including New York, having a worse infection and hospitalization rate than we have down here in the oasis of freedom. Go figure, roll of the dice, indeed. And uh, so I sent that off and since there is uh, no uh, chance I'll ever hear from her again, I went over from the depression uh, over at Pile of Fish and I went over to the mainstream media news, to Yahoo News, to go see if they ever mention the uh, the collapse of a planet. So I took my heavy heart uh, with the knowledge that I will never find my soulmate uh, over to the mainstream media news. Uh, gonna go poke around the doomosphere. And what do you think pops up on Yahoo News right here in the Oasis of Freedom? <clears throat> this is from the Pensacola News Journal this morning. Florida man spent 54 years in search of the love of his life. Then he lost her in seconds. Yes, a Florida man is still reeling several days after he lost the love of his life in a fire that destroyed the couple's humble campsite where they had been living. Craig Heathco, age 55, said he tried to save his girlfriend, Angela Meeks, from the flames after a small portable heater. That's my small portable heater in the background. Accidentally caught their camping tent on fire last week. Angela, age 53, who had trouble walking unassisted due to recent strokes, succumbed to her burn wounds Wednesday night. You see, I thought that succumbed meant you died. So I guess that woman up there in New York who succumbed to corona panic, that was a message from the grave. Yes. Angela succumbed to her burn wounds Wednesday night before paramedics arrived to the homeless camp where she and Craig had been living together as a couple for almost a year. Craig himself was badly burned while trying to pull Angela out of their tent's boiling nylon. And less than a week removed from the tragedy, he is back, still living in the woods and in pain. The skin up and down the right side of his body is raw and steams when an over-the-counter burn cream is applied. But the physical pain, Craig said, 
pales in intensity compared to the hurt in his heart. Quoting the love lost Craig, quote, I prayed for her for 54 years. This is a 55-year-old man, so he started praying for her at age one. I prayed for her for 54 years until I found her, but then I only got to spend one year with her. He said about his lost love, Angie, Craig is heartbroken and the ache of it is consuming. Quote, she loved me every day. She loved me and she truly loved me. Not like all those other damn women who I've had in my past. Angie loved me and I loved her. Craig said Angie loved him regardless of his past and current situation. To Angie, it did not matter that he was homeless, lived in the woods in a tent, and had spent the better part of the past decade rambling his way across the continental U.S. jobless on cold and desperate nights in the woods when they were huddled together, Angie made Craig feel like he was still a special person with a place in the world by her side. Quote, Yes, I loved her with all my heart, bro. All my heart. Craig said. Craig and Angie's tent was set up next to a tent shared by, true, by two brothers on the night of the fire in, the, in this homeless camp uh, on the outskirts of uh, Pensacola. Craig was seated outside talking to his two neighbors at about 7 p.m. Angie was asleep on the couple's bed in sight of the tent, lying, ne lying next to a small portable heater positioned inside the tent to keep her warm. Said Craig, It happened so quick. I couldn't really tell you what even happened. It happened so quick. I've never really seen nothing go up that quick in my life. Craig did not see what exactly happened inside their tent. All he knows is that one second everything was fine. Everything was fine in Craig's life. And the next his home was ablaze. Angie could not get out of the tent on her own because of her disability. So Craig rushed in to try to pull her out in the process, suffering burns, quote, all over the right side of my body, my face, my arm. I'm burned pretty good. I'm guessing third degree because my knuckle, it burned the hide off my knuckle. Yes. One of the two brothers living in the tent next to Craig and Angie <clears throat> called 911. All right. So, how did Craig and Angie find love in the end times? Craig said he first met Angie at the beginning of 2021 at a Loaves and Fishes organization in Biloxi, Mississippi, and they instantly fell in love. They liked everything about each other, and in the early days of their relationship, 
the pair spent hours just talking and chatting, chatting about anything and everything. Quote, she was just a good woman. She never smoked a cigarette, never drank a drop of alcohol in her life, never done no drugs, never done none of all that. She was just a damn good woman. Yes, Angie had already suffered multiple strokes before Craig met her. She was paralyzed on the right side of her body, used a wheelchair, and Craig became her caretaker. They moved to Pensacola together, looking for a better life last February. Quote, we spent all our holidays together for the last freaking year, and every holiday was special to her. Valentine's, Christmas, Thanksgiving, she loved holidays. <clears throat> After the fire, Craig was transported to the hospital but discharged after a single night. He moved into the neighboring tent occupied by the two brothers who had lived next to him and Angie. Yes. Uh, there you go. Uh, anyone who would like to make a donation to help Craig and the area's other homeless people may do so by contacting the Alfred Washburn Center. Assumedly in Pensacola. So there you go. Craig and Angie. I know it, little dog. You're as, you're as torn up as I am. For 54 years, that man, looking for the love of his life, and he found his soulmate, and she burned up in their tent. Oh, God. You, you know... There's just no fucking way to win, guys. There's no fucking way to win. Anyway, I need to round, wind up this heartbreaking tale and uh, go move that uh, roll of paper towels away from my portable heater. I highly suggest you get out there to a, what's it called, a loaves and fishes event and find your soulmate while you still can. Do you want to go to a, uh, should we go to a homeless shelter or a soup kitchen to find a woman who would uh, find some uh, paralyzed homeless woman in a wheelchair willing to uh, be my soulmate? What do you think, little dog? You said, Pop, I'm your soulmate. Bye, guys.